Is it? All right, take two. <laughs> All right, so um, I guess we're, we were at a, if you may tell us your whole name, uh, preferred spelling, your date of birth, where you were born. Just uh, just go, Ray Martinez, uh, born in San Antonio, Santa Rosa uh, Hospital. And uh, we moved to Fort Worth when I was about two or three years old. My dad transferred from Fort Sam Houston to the uh, Army Depot in Fort Worth. And uh, I went to school uh, at the Worth Heights Elementary School. And it was, it was pretty neat going to school there. Uh, I remember them telling us we were mestizos and we didn't know what the heck that was about. And we couldn't speak uh, English. So I remember in the second grade uh, when they told us that Miss Hickman, I remember the teacher, so she would, uh, I pretend like I didn't, uh, I couldn't speak English. So she would get, Miss Hickman would get another student, I remember his name was Claudia Martinez, and he would get her to translate uh, uh, for her. So she'd tell him in, in English, he'd tell me in Spanish, and I would, you know, answer back to him in Spanish, and he would t tell her in English. But I, I don't know wh why I did that, but I just mm -hmm. didn't like, you know, because that's how we grew up, you know, speaking Spanish and English mm -hmm. at the same time. And, uh, but it was, you know, we had a pretty, uh, going to Worth Heights Elementary School, we had a lot of fun, you know. Tell me about your parents. Uh, what are their names? Where did they meet? Do you know how they met? Uh, my dad was born in Eagle Pass, and my mom was born in Crystal City, so I think that's when they met in Eagle Pass. And uh, my dad was the youngest of five, had five sisters, and uh, so they got married in Eagle Pass. And my dad uh, uh, fought in World War II in Japan, against Japan. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, what I heard one time uh, when my parents were living in uh, uh, Hooks, Texas, about 12 miles west of Texas, Texas, they were at the uh, uh, at the uh, at the Army Depot, Red River Army Depot's uh, picnic grounds, and I was just going to school here in North in Denton, Texas, and um, and my mother told me a story one time I went to visit them in Hooks, and she told me a story they were there. Uh, and there was this other family from Oklahoma, and this man was blind. But uh, he told him that he fought in Japan, and he told him what infantry he was in the, uh, in the Army. And that was the same outfit my dad was. So he told they were in the jungles, and their unit was trapped in the hill in, in the jungle. They were getting shot up. And he said, this Reynaldo uh, Martinez uh, uh, saved us because he found a way out of, uh, of that hill. Came back and got the wounded and, and it, you know, anyway, he, was, he started, he, mother uh, said that my dad motioned her to, to her not to say that was him. Yeah. And because my dad didn't want to relieve the war. Uh -huh. And the man started crying. He said, if it, if it had been for him, he will never been alive. Wow. So, uh, and how'd your father take that? You just oh, I wasn't there. My my, my mom told me about it, oh, okay. and dad wasn't around. Uh, but uh, my dad never did talk about the war. Mm -hmm. But you know, I heard stories about him that a lot of the soldiers were uh, coward. I mean, they were they just couldn't take it no more, and my dad had to push him. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. I always felt I like to look that up and see, you know, Medal of Honor, because mm -hmm. what he did was pretty, you know, pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, that that, that, that that's a really, yeah, that's, a, you know, coinc the coincidence of him being right there, you know, and hearing that story. Mm -hmm. But Eagle Pass, though, uh, what did he do working in Eagle Pass? Because I I'm a little familiar with Eagle Pass history, a little bit with Crystal City, obviously. What I deal with is like you know 1960s and beyond. So your mother wouldn't have been there. Um, but what did your parents do when they were in their own separate hometowns that you know of? 
Well, my dad was young when he went into the service. Okay. So I know he used to like to hunt and, uh, and you know, I, I never did. Uh, I know my mom, I know what she did when she was growing up. She did the uh, uh, migrants when they went picking uh, fruit and stuff mm -hmm. like that up north. I remember her talking about that. Mm -hmm. But my dad never did that, and uh, do you think maybe he might have worked in the? I think it's a mine, or mining town, right? Eagle Pass, if I'm not mistaken. No, I don't know what he, what my dad when he was younger. Once he got he got he went into the uh, work for the uh, Army Depot. Once he got out of service, okay. so so that's when you know he was stationed in Fort San Houston for a while. Okay, and so then they went to San Antonio for a while. Right. Well, that's where he was, he okay. worked at, yeah, and that's where I was born. And about two more of my brother and my sister, and then the rest were born in Fort Worth. Okay, so uh, you moved to Fort Worth in 1950-ish, give or take. Uh, yeah, early fifties. Um, so, what was it? What, when do you start remembering? You know, as early as you can remember, what did your neighborhood look like? What neighborhood was it? Um, uh, well, it's down there by. Uh, it used to be a. Uh, where the uh, the uh, shopping center is, the it used to be called Seminary South Shopping Center. There used to be a lake called Kitty Lake, and then they drained it so they could start a shopping center. And beyond south of uh, south of uh, Seminary, it was nothing but country. Well, it was country really from the, from around uh, La Grand Plaza. Now is what it's called. And really, it's country all around from 35 uh, east of us. Uh, mainly, it was country. A lot of, and uh, and after elementary school, we used to go. Uh, they uh, bust us to uh, to Parker Junior High. It does. It's not no more there. It's on the Berry Street, I think, or no, it's on Rosedale. And uh, that's where we went uh, junior high, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Even though we were closer to Rosemont and other junior highs, for some reason they bust us down to Parker Junior High. What did the, um, I guess the demographics or the student body that you went with, was it other Mexicans there or is it just you or? Where? Uh, at, I guess at all schools, at the elementary and then at the junior at high. The element, at the elementary it was mixed. It was mixed. Okay. Yeah. But I can't remember if there's any uh, uh, blacks there or not uh, in elementary. Can't remember. But in in Parker, it was it was all mixed, mainly Hispanics. Mm -hmm. And uh, but in elementary days, we used, uh, they had a YMCA, and not a YMCA. Uh, yeah, on Saturdays we used to walk over to Rosemont Junior High, the park there, and. Uh, and soccer, football during the summer, and that was neat. Mm -hmm. About 15 of us would walk on down to Rosemont Park, and they had the, uh, uh, the the league, you know. And then in church, I'm going back now uh, a little bit early, uh, but in in growing up in Southside, Michael Heart of Mary had two. Baseball team age group from about ten o'clock, ten years old to twelve years old, and uh, we had two teams, uh, all Fort Worth uh, uh, Catholic churches participating mm -hmm. in, in the summer in baseball, but we had enough boys that uh, we had two teams, and we we're competitive, mm -hmm. uh, you know, both teams, mm -hmm. and we had a rivalry between uh, the other ten, twelve year olds. What was the other? What were the churches? Uh, was well, all the Catholic churches okay. in Fort Worth okay. participated in summer league baseball. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask about uh, your schools, also elementary and uh, middle school. Did you speak Spanish in school? No, none. For remember, in second grade, they told us we couldn't speak Spanish. Did you anyway? No. 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 I just didn't want to. I didn't speak. I pretended like I didn't know English. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what would happen if you spoke Spanish in schools? Like if you were, if I spoke, we I don't know I forgot what they were going to do, what the discipline was going to be. I couldn't remember. 
so I, well, they didn't want us. They didn't want to speak in Spanish, so I played like I didn't know how to speak English. Yeah, yeah. So they finally got. Uh, she finally caught on, and so you know, and, and I had to quit. You know. Yeah. And then it turned out you spoke fluent English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you ever hear of any other kids getting disciplined for speaking Spanish? No, no. Okay. No, I sure didn't. Okay. Um, so what about high school? High school? Uh, you, you attended... Um, Trimble Tech. Trimble Tech, okay. Tenth uh, grade. Uh, it was just, now that is, they got four years of high school. Now, back then, they only had three, 10, 11, and 12. So I went my sophomore year, uh, and then my dad, they closed the depot down here in Fort Worth. And and my dad when uh wanted to move back to Fort Worth to retire when he retired. So the nearest one was in uh uh Hooks, Texas. It's about twelve miles uh west of Texana, Texas. That's a depot called Red River Army Depot. And we moved there and I went to Hooks High School. Uh, my junior and senior year, and then after that went to junior college, uh, Texas County Junior College, two years, and then uh, went to University of, back then it was called North Texas, mm -hmm. University of North Texas in Denton. Um, tell me about, uh, when did you graduate high school? 67, okay. 1967. So, so what was high school like? Was it, was it was Trimble? Was it mixed or in Trimble? Mm -hmm. uh, that year, my sophomore year, was the first year uh, blacks uh, could go to uh, to the get integrated, mm -hmm. and I think Tech was the only school that got integrated. Mm -hmm. There was no problem. Yeah, yeah no problem. Okay. And what about Hooks? Uh, it's in, near Tar Texarkana. Or was it in Texas? No, it was uh, 12, 12 miles. miles west, right? uh, Hooks right. was 12 miles uh, outside of Texcana. What did the population there look like? Oh, it was just a uh, little town. Just uh, it was 2A, uh, I think. About was, I can't remember. About 20, 30 graduated in '67. It was just a little out, out in the Piney Woods. Mm -hmm. You know, it was. Mm -hmm. It was a culture shock for my uh, for my sisters. Uh, I tell yeah. you that. Why is that? From Fort Worth, and and then moving to uh, Hooks. I mean, everything was different. Uh, it was like twenty years behind time. Wow. Uh, it was totally different. Yeah. They never experienced that. Yeah. Um, and then so. You went to college. Did you ever uh, fear the draft? Ever fear or ever was that ever a thing? How did counselors treat that? The military? Did they ever tell you you should go to college, or did they say? I was in North Texas uh, going to school, and uh, and they had the draft, and I got a call uh, that I was uh, drafted. So I had uh, I went uh, I went to Texcana. And there, and there were twelve of us that were bused to Treeport for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, the physical. The uh, maps, right? Was yeah, it the, maps? the physical. Yeah. Uh, and uh, out of twelve of us, two passed it. One black young man and me. The ten of the rest of the guys were white. Okay, so I had two weeks. To be, uh, and they said you got college credits. As soon as you get out of the uh, training and all that, we put you in OC school. This is when the Vietnam uh, offers a school because of my uh, uh, of the uh, college credits I had. And uh, anyway, so I went back to Denton, and and my roommate was Phil Glass. And uh, he said, come on, let's go and talk to uh, Curtis. That was his last name. I can't remember his first name. Well, his mother, Curtis' uh, mother, was the draft board director for Northeast 
Texas, Arkansas, Miss, uh, Louisiana, Oklahoma. She was, and uh, so it was a Sunday, I remember that. And, and he called his mother and he said, Mom wants to talk to you. So she asked me some questions. So you're going to school some, during the summer. And remember, I had one little week before I had to go and turn myself in. And uh, she said, uh, are you going to school uh, this summer? I said, no, ma'am. So you write me a letter. Oh, I better not say this, but I'm going to say this. So you write me a letter and say, and say you're, you, uh, you're in, uh, in school. And, and just write me a letter and I'll take care of it. And uh, a week later, I got the, you know, out of the... Uh, so, so if you would have got the draft notice in the summer, which tech, even if you are a student, but you got in the summer when you're not in class, you would have still gotten drafted? Wow. Okay. And, and, and remember, I went and there was uh, 12 of us and, right. and just two of us passed. Then I had about less than two weeks before I had to go to basic training. Mm -hmm. And this was like during the summer? Right. Yeah, okay. and and uh, and I came back, and then uh, because of that lady, she mm -hmm. got me out of it. Wow. Um, what about? Uh, did you have any communication? Because I, I see here you're uh, young Democrats, the junior college there. Um, also at the at UNT, were you young Democrat? There? Yes, yes, sir. Um, well, did you have any sort of connections with other universities, any other young Democrat clubs? Uh, I guess in North Texas. Yeah, all the uh, colleges around Dallas-Fort Worth. Do you uh, recall anything, um, I guess, any of the stuff that was going on at UT Arlington? Um, Not really, you know, just unless we had some big thing going on, you know, we all did. But I remember it when I was in at Texcana, we went to Dallas, and I remember meeting uh, Yarborough. We were downtown at the hotel. I remember uh, that man there. He was something else, and there was a lot of from all Texas down there after some kind of Democrat convention or something. What year was it? Uh, it was back when I was at Texas County Junior College, around '68, '69, somewhere around there. And that year too, '69, uh, when they had in Houston, they had uh, when they were running for president. Who was that? Uh, was it uh, Kennedy or was it uh, Lyndon B. Johnson? I remember that at the uh, Astrodome. They had a Democrat, because a bunch of people, a uh, Democrat party from Texcana, they had buses, about 10 or 15 of them, and we went down there for a, a Democratic convention. And Do you recall uh, in Fort Worth or any of North Texas for that matter? Um, the Brown Berets or um, Mayo Mexican American Youth Organization. Yes, and uh, uh, UNT. At uh, UNT. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, and uh, uh, there were some, uh, not too many around Denton, but you know uh, we knew organizations around the cities that had them. And, Do you remember the Brown Berets? Uh, mainly from the uh, California. Oh, from California. The, yeah, know, yeah, yeah the back then yeah. when all that was going on. Yeah, because I know there was a really active chapter in, uh, in Dallas um, with the Santos, Santos Rodriguez case. Oh, yeah. 73, yeah. 72, 73, when um, I guess era, all the campaigning around that was happening, they were really... That's involved. when they emerged. Yeah, that's when, when they became, When like, people really knew uh, that there were... Uh, uh, Mexican Americans uh, organizations mm -hmm. that 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 uh, rose up to for uh, for killing a 12-year-old boy, yeah. and that's when it really started. You know, you used to hear about uh, 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 Hispanics that that uh, when there was injustice going on, mm -hmm. that's that's what really sparked it. Yeah. Did you hear about any of that in Fort Worth? I guess the sort of stuff that was happening, like say Dallas. I was in Denton. At you that were in time. Denton, so like okay, but at school, months. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So and you said Denton, there probably really wasn't that much, right? Is that yeah, well, that's when I was going to UNT. Okay, and but there wasn't much like Chicano activity as a 
Not as much as, uh, as in Dallas or in Fort Worth when there were uh, situations happening. Mm -hmm. But the only big thing that happened uh, down in, in Denton was when uh, uh, there was some uh, racial stuff going on, but they kept it pretty quiet, the city, until one time uh, a year, one time uh, the city of uh, Denton got a $100,000 uh, grant from the government uh, ride equipment. I don't know, it's $100,000 of ride equipment. You're talking about the whole thing. Well, who's, you know, Denton was just 60000 back then. And, uh, and within one year, that's back when streaking was going on around the college campus back in the uh, early 70s. Uh, well, they were doing it in, in one night in Denton. Well, the city, I mean, the uh, police department decided to use their brand new ride equipment. And and uh, I was living, we were living outside of Denton. And, uh, and uh, there's some people there uh, from New York visiting other people that are going to school there. Well, they left our place and went to get a pizza down by the campus. Next, about two hours later, they're in jail. And they told us, yeah, we're walking to get a pizza and police threw us in the paddy wagon. And, and what happened was that they, professors, they threw them in a paddy wagon. I mean, they were uh, with batons, they were amazing people uh, uh, because they were having uh, running around in the nude or whatever. Yeah. So they used their uh, ride. I mean, they went across a line and started throwing Testing everybody, arresting, yeah. just uh, So mm. that incident changed uh, uh, Denton because there were lawsuits. You're talking about some kids' parents that were well off they filed lawsuits against the city. And from there on, the University of North Texas and, and uh, TWU, they got more involved with the city government. That's when uh, the city uh, morphed out of being a redneck mm -hmm. little town. Because you had two you know, universities. Yeah. And at that time, the universities didn't get involved with the city government. But after that, they did. And it yeah. changed, didn't for better. Yeah. I've never heard of that before. Yep. I remember that. So when did you graduate college? Uh, I, when I was a senior when I, uh, I didn't graduate. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what year was, what was that? that year? About 73. 73. When, yeah. And so all that events, all those events that happened was like that year, you think, or? Earlier. 72? Uh, well, I was 74 when I got out. Uh, okay. It was 72, yeah. 72, 73, somewhere around there. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what brought you back to uh, Fort Worth? About five years ago or six, I uh, uh, I got laid off from work, and I was taking unemployment benefits, and uh, and uh, people the employment uh, said that we'll we'll uh, uh, if you want to change your career, uh, we'll pay you know for you go to school or finish school, and I said, I'd like to get in nursing. And they said, great, we'll pay you for two years, get your two-year degree and all that. Well, I only had uh, less than a year of unemployment, and they had a list over a year, uh, a list of uh, people that had applied for it. So the next thing uh, in manufacturing, they had in Fort Worth uh, a school, six months, uh, a school for training to be a machinist. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I accepted that and came down here. Okay. So you just recently came back then? About five or six years okay. ago. And so uh, what what did you do after uh, your time at UNT? I worked. There in Denton? Yeah. Still? Okay. I worked, okay. yeah. Um, in manufacturing, uh, metal fabricator, stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, so I... Finish. I got a uh, license to be a machinist. I got my certificate, except around what was it uh, when the job started going down? Yeah, 
08, 09 maybe? Or are we talking about before, like oh, uh, seven Just about, no, about uh, six, seven years ago. Okay, yeah, yeah. When yeah. Uh, everything started. Yeah, like 09 uh, I think is when. So I had this machinist certificate and there was no jobs. Mm -hmm. And then I finally, I found a job about five years ago or six years ago. And uh, so I worked there and then I retired. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you join any unions? Either when you were working in Denton? Uh, when I was, yeah, when I was uh, working in Carrollton, uh, uh, there was a union there. At the, they were making uh, uh, some, t back in the Vietnam War, they were making uh, some type of, of shells for, uh, to make uh, bombs. And I was a union, uh, involved with the union there. Yeah. What union was it? I, I couldn't remember. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so let's go back, I guess, um, to the, what the neighborhoods look like and I guess the, your, your life here in Southside. Um, what did it look like when you were growing up? Was there paved roads? Um, no, no. Sewage? Uh, sewage was, uh, but most of the roads were rock. You know, the pebbles. Um, uh, was it caliche? Uh, you call it caliche? Kind of. Uh, there were some paved streets, you know, but mm -hmm. mostly it was unpaid. Because I remember uh, jogging uh, on those rocks. You know, mm -hmm. at night I'd go jogging in the neighborhood. But, uh, yeah. Um, uh, and so it, I'm sure by now when you were growing up, there was running water also there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plumbing. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, tell me about all the different uh, barrios in, in Fort Worth. Was there, I guess, do you recall any uh, conflict with the, with the kids going back and forth in, through neighborhoods or, I well, guess, as they would put it in newspapers, gang fights, anything like well, that? Well, if there was, uh, I'm sure there was. Uh, I, I usually, you know, uh, I was involved in sports from elementary, junior high. So I didn't run around at night, and when I got to high school, I played uh, football, and between football and baseball, in my sophomore year, I worked at Seminary South at this hamburger place, and, uh, and then, then baseball started, then I played baseball. So I was pretty much occupied with sports and school. Mm -hmm. And but do you remember, like, you know? That yeah, they sort of they had they had it, but it, you know, uh, it wasn't too bad in Southside. You might have somebody that was a thug that hung around the block. So you know, if I was going to go to the like call it the store uh, La Tendita, mm -hmm. I just go another block, go around and avoid uh, and avoid that yeah. you know that situation. Yeah. yeah. Um. The, so uh, you have here just outside Bryan Avenue. Was there like a, a name? I guess for your part of well, that, that was that was neat because that Bryan Street it just it it tees to Patford, take a ride about two blocks is the Macleod Heart of Mary on Patford, it was not there no more. But uh, that one block and maybe a, a block down and a block over, there was like fifteen or kids the same age. So we would always have baseball games, football games on the street, mm -hmm. and and and, the, and then they used to come over. To, we had a big old mulberry tree, so during the summer or any time on weekends, everybody be over there playing uh, marbles. They bring the cans of marbles. They be in the front yard, backyard at my house, uh, playing marbles or. Tops. They bring their cans of tops, and you know, there'd be about ten groups playing, you know, among each other. And, but my mother was a cook, and that's another thing. Probably when they came, <laughs> she could really cook some good Mexican food, and I'm sure those kids got fed. <laughs> yeah. Did y'all trade uh, baseball cards? Oh so, yeah, yeah. Base. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that was fun too. Yeah. Um, See, I, I, I saw, I had seen Born in San Antonio here, but then you moved when you were way too young. Uh, I wanted to know more about your time in San Antonio, but 
you wouldn't remember any of that. Yeah. Um, you say here, uh, your family is third generation Texan. So, um, yeah, tell me about that. So your parents were Eagle Pass, Crystal. What about like their parents and their grandparents? Their parents were born in Texas. Do you know where, whereabouts? Uh, I'm sure in Eagle Pass, my uh, mother, grandmother, and my grandfather. Uh, yeah, because I used to spend summers there with my grandparents, my father's side, and and uh, and uh, I can remember uh, my 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 grandmother uh, had about two three acres, and they had uh, uh, chickens, you know. Now they call them, what do you call them when they just free range? Mm -hmm. Well, they had it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember her sitting down and getting it, or she'd get up and get them by the neck and spin them around. And, and she had a chair by the stump of a tree and put it there and chop it, chop mm -hmm. the head off and it. That hen would be uh, running around without a head. And I remember her, uh, Washing my hair with uh, with the yellow the yolk of an egg, and she had uh, lemons growing there, grapes, you know, all your fruit you want, oranges, and I remember putting some lemon juice with that egg yolk and something else, and that was what the shampoo was. She, oh. yeah, that, and I remember her one time I had fever, and my aunts were there. And uh, and they uh, cook a tomato, and they put it in in, uh, in a diaper, and they put it on my stomach, the tomato that was cooked, and on my soles, my feet, I guess to draw the uh, the uh, the uh, the flu out or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember, you know, the uh, remedies, home remedies. Yeah, that yeah. Did Folk that. remedies. Yeah. yeah. And. I, was, I wanted to ask, how did your grandparents identify? Did they call themselves Mexicano, Tejano, Hispano, Mexican American? Did Maybe. you ever hear them talk about anything mm -hmm. like that? No, it's, no, it just, no. yeah, it was just uh, spoken Spanish. <laughs> and that was pretty much it? Yeah. They never yeah. self-identified as? No, they were not uh, into politics. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and so what about your mom's side? Do you know your mom's side? Um, it's in Crystal City. I remember staying over there too in the summers. And my uncle and aunt, uh, related to my mother, they had a grocery store. And uh, and uh, and and we, my my aunt uh, or my grandmother used to cook uh, tole. And since they had a uh, grocery store had pan de dulce. Mm -hmm. So I always look forward to eating tole and with sweet bread that they make there. And so, you know, it's a lot of fun, you know. It's, you know, I was real young, so I, I just remember just a little bit mm -hmm. of it growing up in the Spanish capital of the world. Yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. And, and so, yeah, that's interesting, too, since um, Family's third generation Texan, and uh, even your grandparents themselves, which would have been second generation. Wait. Well, it was my parents were set first, and we were second. Yeah. Okay. Or is it, no, my parents, my You're, parent, my grandparents were first. There you go. Okay. And okay, yeah. my parents were second. And we, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, do you know when uh, your grandparents came over to the U.S. at all, or were they born here? They were born in oh, Texas. Okay. Okay. And yeah. you know before them how they. Came over? No, I, I, I never did research that. I should have, but uh, uh, it, you know, a lot of uh, my relatives they 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 could speak English. Just, you know, mm -hmm. I remember that. I remember my father's side. Uh, his one of his sisters uh, was married. Uh, Charles Bacchus. I think he was German Catholic, and uh, he had an insurance company, and they lived in Uvalde, and I visited with them too, and 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 we all, you know, they had uh, two daughters and two sons, 
because one daughter became a nun, and uh, right when I was uh, in in high school in Trimble Tech, or before I went, I went with my aunt and uncle. They lived in Michigan, uh, Adrian, Michigan, and uh, I remember going up there and staying a summer. But uh, uh, the other family member, the one that Uvalde I was talking about, uh, they had we had two cousins. Uh, uh, two boys, uh, they got track scholarships to USC and UCLA, and uh, from Uvalde. Yep. What What are their names? Uh, Bacchus, B A C K U S, something okay. like that. Okay. And uh, and uh, uh, my uh, cousin Becky. I guess she took after her father because she was a blonde, blue-eyed. You know. mm -hmm. But now uh, she she lives in Toronto, in Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has family up there. Okay, uh, I wanted to ask you a couple more things. I, we're coming up on like forty-five minutes now, um, and I I think we're good on time. But I just want to make sure we cover a couple things. Um, at UNT, were how many other Mexican Americans uh, did you remember going to school with there? I remember there were not that many, mm -hmm. not that many, but I remember one, Rene Martinez. Okay, I had a class with him, and he's now involved with, uh, I think he's still involved with Dallas politics. And I think his family might be the ones that had the Martinez, uh, the, the uh, uh, El Phoenix. Mm, okay. It's either he, uh, it's one of the Martinez that with the restaurant or the one with the politics, but he was trying to get me to uh, join his family with, I don't know if it was with the restaurant or something, mm -hmm. or involved with politics in Dallas. Mm -hmm. I remember that Renee Martinez. Renee yeah. Martinez. Okay. Um, do any others uh, stand out in your mind that mm -hmm. you recall? No, sir, I sure don't. Uh, except, you know, uh, the other was uh, Popo Gonzalez, mm -hmm. uh, who was involved with uh, University of North Texas and involved with uh, every aspect of the community of Denton. Now, he's when I met, when I got there in 69, around 70, when I met him, he had a barber shop. Okay. And, was there any, um, did you feel any, I guess, racial tension with no. the Anglos there at all? No, the, uh, the, I got along with people there in Denton, uh, no matter what color, and, and, uh, uh, and Hooks, same way, no problem. Texcana, junior college, no problem, you know. Yeah. Even when we were growing up in, in, the, in the barrio in South Side, mm -hmm. there was no problems with policemen or nothing mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. Never, you know. Yeah. Um, well, okay, I've, I've won uh, uh, going to Leonard's. Okay, my, back then, uh, growing up in Fort Worth, the grocery store was at Leonard's downtown Fort Worth. And... Uh, they had uh, water fountains. They had one for blacks and one for white. And I remember, I looked and I said, I asked the mother, Where, where's our water fountain? <laughs> and my parents just laughed and there were some people around. And then I went and drank from the black and then I drank from the white. I said, Mother, it's, it's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember going, I was, uh, in, Going to eat at the cafeteria at Leonard's. Oh, that was that was some good food there. <laughs> um, so, so I'm glad you brought that up. So, where did you fall in that? Like, so um, and when things were segregated and things were black and white, where did you feel you fit in, or where did you feel that? You... I, I didn't fit out. I, I didn't feel uh, I didn't feel any. You know uh, that I had, I had this you know, this, or uh, we belong in this area, or, no. So you felt sort of like you can kind of weave back and forth? Yeah, I, you know, okay. I, I could, 
it, it, I never was told, except for that black and white, that's mm -hmm. the first time, you know, and then the elementary school when they told us we were mestizos, but we didn't understand what they were talking about. But then when they said we couldn't speak Spanish, and now that right there, second grade, now mm -hmm. that's when uh, I guess I rebelled in my way mm -hmm. and, and pretended I, didn't, I couldn't speak English. Yeah. 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 Uh, you brought something up that I wanted to uh, build up on, but I had another question in mind. Uh, I, I've interviewed somebody in Fort Worth, uh, I guess like two years ago, and he, he, uh, he talked about a swimming pool Oh, the uh, the one down uh, Forest Park. Maybe the main one. That's the only one we could go to. Okay, tell me about that. Oh, uh, it was it was neat. God, I mean, we never seen a swimming pool like that, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it was neat. Everybody enjoyed it. Everybody got along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I, I I heard um, that at that pool there was a group of uh, uh, Mexican American kids, and there was one who was really really dark, darker than most. And the woman who was in charge there said that he's not allowed into the pool. Really? Yeah. But what the, year was that? I, I wish I could tell you. It might have been sixty, maybe not then. It was because I was. Uh, it must have been early sixties, late. When 50s, we could go maybe. on the bus was when we were in junior high. So it was before. It was way. It was when we were, in probably fifth, sixth grade, seventh, somewhere around there. So. It had to be around, because I graduated from 67 from high school. You had to be around the 60s. Yeah. But no, I, I never did see that, you know. Yeah. I'm sure somebody you might have had a bad employee, but. Yeah. Did you, uh, how did you identify uh, all through college? Were you Chicano or Mexican-American? Mexican-American, Mexican yeah. Uh, did you ever identify as like Chicano and? No, you know, I just. Yeah. Let's just ask you what you were. I said, yeah, you know, Tex, you know, Tex Mex. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that's one of my favorites still to this day. Tex Mex. Tex -Mex yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. yeah, that's all I, I have to tell people sometimes too. My parents from Mexico and La Texas. Latino. Uh, I didn't even hear that. You know, that's like, new. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't used back then. Mm -hmm. Latino. Yeah. Did you hear the word Latin a lot? No. No? Okay. Oh, Latin, uh, uh, Little Joe and the Latineers. <laughs> okay. It was a uh, Mexican group. Okay. That's it, but, you know. Because I, I also saw in newspapers it would refer to Latin Americans a lot, and it would be talking about Mexican Americans, but it would say Latin Americans, it's like in the newspaper. Well, that, that's Latin Americans, I guess, is when you're talking about South Americans yeah, and, but, um, and, and Central Americans. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I guess the words. Uh, Latin refers to not only uh, people from Texas, but it refers to people from yeah. Central, South America. Right, right. Um, yeah, and, and but I guess when I would see it in papers from like the 50s and 60s, it would say, you know, Latin Americans, and then it would say, um, you know, it'd be like a, a Mexican American group. It'd be like MASO, right? Mexican American Student Organization. It's a group with Latin Americans in it, you know? Uh -huh. So, like, they were talking about Mexican Americans, but they would say Latin Americans. And I wondered if you ever heard no. that growing up at all. No, no. Okay. Mostly Mexican. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have um, as far as questions that I would, that I'm curious about. Is there anything that you wanted to include? Anything you wanted to talk about? Uh, just that. Uh, uh, there was no racial uh, growing up in uh, Fort Worth and it, that I s experienced uh, really you know, when I got older mm -hmm. and when I was in East Texas. I'm sure there was, but I never did encounter. Mm -hmm. And going uh, to Denton, you know, there was, but nothing like now, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, now it's it's uh, people really uh, express themselves in many different ways, more harsh, you know, more violently. Yeah, yeah, I would have to agree with that. <clears throat> um, well, thank you very much. We're coming up thank on you. about an hour uh, of talking. Um, yeah, thank you. I, I really enjoyed your perspective, uh, your contribution to this project. It's it's really helpful and it helps us piece together the story you know that we're trying to tell.
So thank you. Thank you. Um, we can go ahead and uh, stop recording.